on the last weekend of this month at the largest tournament in China, the public forum topic is going to be resolved rehabilitation should be prioritized over retribution in the criminal justice system. This is the first of a couple videos I'm going to do on some international topics that students at the Stanford Institute are competing under. I'm going to try to cover the topics as a whole, talk about them in comparison to previous U.S. topics that had similar wording and may use similar resources, talk about how to adapt them for the judge audiences that you're probably going to have, and then talk about the arguments in the topic. So this topic bears a lot of resemblance to the January and February 2013 Lincoln-Douglas topic in the United States, which just added in the United States to the end of this wording. So you can certainly find some resources from that. Just keep in mind that this topic is not U.S. specific, even if some of the background you might be seeing is. We'll get into that in a little bit. So. We're going to define some terms in this topic, but we're going to start from the end and go back to the beginning because two of the earliest definitions are subsets of the last definition. So, the criminal justice system is the system of practices and institutions of governments directed at upholding social control, deterring and mitigating crime, or sanctioning people who violate laws with criminal penalties and rehabilitation efforts. And Generally, this breaks down into four or five purposes, depending on who is defining the criminal justice system. Its goals are deterrence, incapacitation, rehabilitation, retribution, and restitution. So deterrence splits into general and specific deterrence. General deterrence is based on the results of the criminal justice system. Other people who see the results don't want to commit that crime. Specific deterrence is the person who did the illegal action is deterred from doing it again. Incapacitation, the second major goal of the criminal justice system, is to just make somebody incapable of committing that crime again. Sometimes it can be by locking them up in jail. Sometimes that can be through capital punishment. Sometimes that can be something more specific to the crime. It might be taking away their ability to go near a certain place. It might be taking away their ability to interact with a certain group of people. Incapacitation covers everything from capital punishment to chemical castration of convicted pedophiles to long jail times to forbidding someone from working in a certain kind of industry. And again, this varies a lot based on which country's criminal justice system we are talking about. Rehabilitation is the third goal, and rehabilitation is more along the lines of making people who have committed crimes productive members of society again, making it so that you have less recidivism, that you have more people who understand why what they did was wrong and are not going to want to do it again. Next category is retribution. Retribution, just basically punishment for the crime, if justice is defined as giving each person their due, this person is due some kind of retaliation. They are due retribution. Retribution is very rarely mentioned as a primary goal of a justice system, though. It's very often mentioned as something that benefits deterrent rather than an end of its own, which is going to complicate this topic and make being the con negating the topic fairly difficult. Last category is restitution. Restitution as a goal in the criminal justice system is talking about giving victims back what they are owed. If money was stolen, giving them money back. If other things were stolen, finding ways to try and compensate for that. Finding ways to make people feel whole again, feel less violated by whatever the crime was, feel like if nothing else, at least society as a whole has their back. So again, that's general deterrence, specific deterrence, incapacitation, rehabilitation, retribution, and restitution. I mention these because you're not going to find any evidence that says that rehabilitation and retribution are the only two goals of a criminal justice system. And when both sides argue about which one should be prioritized over the other, the arguments that the con side is going to make are not going to be retribution is the number one purpose of a criminal justice system. More than likely, they are going to be 
of these different layered priorities, this priority undermines other more important priorities if we put it too high. It should be at the bottom. So those are some things to think about as we dive into this. Now, despite the resources the learning leaders put out, this topic isn't mostly about the United States, though it does have the plurality of the world's prisoners. The typical prisoner is you had to just pick someone at random in the world is most likely going to be from the United States, is going to be male, is going to be in there for a nonviolent crime that is probably drug related and probably wouldn't still be in jail if they were sentenced today rather than a decade or two ago. So when we're talking about this resolution, if we're talking about it on balance, we are not just talking to people who are in jail for white collar crime for less than a year. We are not talking about people who are in jail for life for murder. Those are fringe cases, but it's asking which should be prioritized above the other, which probably means whichever one is bigger in the majority of cases. This opens up the path for one particular argument where you could have a team saying that we owe retribution to every criminal, but only some criminals want to be rehabilitated. Therefore, prioritized means talking about who we affect the most. You might also say prioritized should mean whatever we want the most. And this one is more of a pro-side argument. You could affirm the resolution by saying that Retribution does happen, but making it our goal corrupts the system. If the goal of the system is to retaliate as violently as possible, as decisively as possible, as forcefully as possible, if the goal is for us to make criminals suffer, then it's not really a justice system anymore. We've lost track of the idea of preventing crime that rehabilitation talks about in the future and focus on what just gives us a visceral feel good response to we have made the bad people suffer. So again, these are different definitions of rehabilitation or retribution. This is different interpretation of prioritized. Now, as far as deterrence goes, is deterrence separate from retribution or is deterrence a goal of retribution? That's a big question that the resolution doesn't explicitly ask, but that both teams need to be able to answer. So does prioritizing rehabilitation over retribution reduce deterrence? I think this is going to be one of the most common negative arguments on the topic. I think that if you're going to be negating, a con team is most likely going to say deterrence is the most important goal. We reduce more crimes by deterring people from committing crimes again, or by deterring society at large from committing crimes again, than we do by trying to rehabilitate a few people, and we have pretty abysmal recidivism statistics anyway. The pro side is going to argue that recidivism statistics aren't as low as they are because we're trying too much rehabilitation. They're going to argue that too much of emphasis on retribution undermines that. They're also going to argue that we see recidivism for alternate causes, such as prisoners not being able to find productive employment after they get out of jail and being forced back into less than legal jobs. So at that point, the question is, does reducing recidivism ha happen more from retribution and the fear of that, or does it happen more from rehabilitation and not wanting to do it in the first place? And even if it does happen more from rehabilitation, does the general deterrence to society at large from deterrence help more? And this is a place where both teams are going to want to look at comparative stats from different countries with different criminal justice systems. Does a country that doesn't have the death penalty have less deterrence for violent crime? Does that crime go up or down based on how severe retribution for the criminal who commits that crime is? Does, for instance, Singapore's extremely harsh retribution for corruption and for drug crimes actually create more deterrence, or the deterrence be created equally with lesser punishments? Do countries that don't have a death penalty have less deterrence because of that? Some countries will openly say, 
rehabilitation is our biggest priority. Some will say rehabilitation is not a priority. You can compare those two countries, but you can't just compare the justice systems. You also have to look at the systems of government in the country as a whole, how entwined their police force is with their military, and what kind of rights they have for that. So overall, the pro side is going to put a picture that rehabilitation might not be the number one goal, but that it is more helpful than retribution for retribution's own sake. They will say that if Khan prioritizes retribution for deterrence's sake, or prioritizes retribution for incapacitation's sake, then that is the reason that incapacitation or deterrence should be prioritized over rehabilitation end of retribution. But it's not a reason that retribution should be a high goal. The con side is going to say that retribution is a key part of these other goals. That even if society takes no joy from this retribution, they should still be seen forcibly retaliating against any crime because doing so makes people think that they should be more upstanding citizens. Following the U.S., the second biggest example of this is definitely China in terms of number of prisoners and in terms of current conflicts about what the criminal justice system's purpose should really be. But it's pretty absent from the analysis I've seen of the topic so far, and that's understandable. This topic happens this winter. Future tournaments to travel to, especially tournaments in the U.S., are partly dependent on how well you are seen to represent your school, represent your country. If you don't feel comfortable talking about the Chinese criminal justice system in this context, you certainly do not need to. There are other countries that are similar in enough different aspects. You can use them as examples as well, and which your judges are probably going to be more amenable to listening to, and which research on is probably going to be more accessible to you from conventional internet. Overall, I think that the topic is probably going to favor the pro side. I think the arguments specifically for retribution are rare. There are more arguments for deterrence that imply retribution, arguments for incapacitation that require retribution, but any good definition of the criminal justice system is going to go ahead and distinguish these things from each other. The only uniquely pro-retribution arguments you're likely to find is really anti-rehabilitation arguments, arguments why rehabilitation doesn't work, why some criminals don't want to be rehabilitated, why including rehabilitation with these other purposes sends mixed messages, why the criminal justice system's job shouldn't be to rehabilitate prisoners who don't want to be rehabilitated, why prisoners who do want to be rehabilitated will take steps to rehabilitate themselves, and why rehabilitation happens in the society outside and after the criminal justice system rather than during it. Overall, though, pro can win either on reducing crime overall or on human rights arguments. Generally speaking, a pro team has more ways to the ballot, and the more nuanced your and the judge's understanding of the different purposes of the criminal justice system is, the easier the round becomes for pro. Khan can push back against this by talking about how the purposes interact with each other and how prioritizing some too highly undermines others, but each side should know what the most important purpose is for their case, whether that is the one in their side of the resolution or one of the other ones that doesn't explicitly belong to either side, and how both retribution and re retaliation, sorry, rehabilitation and retaliation interact with these other purposes. If you have any other questions, feel free to message me or leave them in the comments below. Best of luck on the topic. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you on it. And I hope to see you the next tournament you travel stateside after this one.